House Toyn is a noble house from the Stormlands. However, the location of their seat has not been documented. Much like most of the early history, even in to the start of the Targaryen era of Westeros. According to some sources, House Point blazoned their arms with a winged heart, black or gold, with the words being fly high, fly far. Given that we know so little of their early history, we cannot definitively say if they descend from first men or Andals. But if their history does indeed predate Aegon's conquest of Westeros, it would be fair to assume that just like many of the pre-conquest houses of the Stormlands, that they do descend as a mix of both Andals and first men. Given the solution to the invasion of the Andals in the Kingdom of the Stormlands by the Storm Kings was to marry into the families of the Andal leaders, as we do not currently know their history pre-conquest, we cannot say if House Toy ever swore fealty to the Storm Kings of House Durandon. However, by the time the first historical records mention them, they are sworn to House Baratheon of Storm's End, the new lords of the Stormlands after the conquest. The first notable member of House Toyne was Sir Terence Toyne, who was active during the reign of King Aegon IV, also known as Aegon the Unworthy, around the year 178 AC. Sir Terence was a member of the King's Guard of King Aegon IV and will forever be remembered in the history books for breaking his vow and waking the wrath of King Aegon. Sir Terence is said to have fallen in love with Bethany Bracken, one of the many mistresses of Aegon IV. In fact, Bethany was the younger sister of another one of the king's mistresses, Barbara Bracken. Sources say that was strategically used by her father and sister to regain the king's favour and thus bring them back into power at court. We do not know if it was willingly complicit in her family's plans, but her actions at court, while the lover of the king, speak to the fact that she perhaps wasn't. By the year 178 AC, King Aegon found Terence and Bethany a bed together, though the exact circumstances of this are unknown. Aegon had Terence executed by dismemberment, piece by piece, slowly, being kept alive as long as possible. Bethany was forced to watch the brutal death of her lover before she too was executed, albeit in a much quicker, kinder fashion. Alongside his daughter, Lord Bracken also paid for Sir Terence and Bethany's folly with his own life. The death of Sir Terence and the dishonourable brutal manner of it sparked a rage within House Toyn. Terence's two brothers sought vengeance against the king for the death of Terence and thus tried to assassinate King Aegon. Their plan may have worked if not for the intervention of one man, the king's brother, the legendary Aemon the Dragon Knight, one of the best warriors Westeros has ever seen and a member of his brother's king's guard. Maybe the two brothers of House Toyne were better fighters than history remembers them for, as while Aemon killed them both during the attempt on the king, it also cost the Dragon Knight his own life. It was not Sir Terence's actions against the king that caused the downfall of his house, but rather the attempt on Aegon's life by Terence's brothers. Perhaps if House Toyne had not sought vengeance, they might still hold power and lands in Westeros to this day. The second, most notable member of House Toyne was Simon Toyne, who was the leader of the notorious Kingswood Brotherhood, an outlaw band that became such a nuisance and thorn in the side of the Iron Throne that in 281 AC, King Aerys II Targaryen sent a detachment of soldiers led by notable members of the Kingsguard to destroy them once and for all during the ensuing battle. If battle is the right word for it, the legendary Kingsguard knight Sir Barristan Selmy, also known as Barristan the Bold, killed Simon while rescuing Lady Jane Swan and her scepter, whom had previously been captured and held hostage by the Brotherhood. Sir Barristan also recalled that Simon attended a tourney at Storm's End prior to 278 AC as a mystery knight that was defeated by Prince Rhaegar Targaryen. Though, according to some sources, Barristan may have confused two separate tourneys. With the death of Simon, House Toyne technically died out, at least in Westeros. Across the narrow sea, in Essos, members of the house lived. Miles Toyne, also known as Blackheart, was an exiled knight and captain general of the Golden Company. Miles was known as Blackheart because of the sigil of House Toyne, which he depicted on his shield. He enjoyed the nickname and appreciated having a fearsome reputation, but in truth, he was not a cruel man. His good friend, John Connington, considered Miles full of life. When Miles would have been Captain General of the Golden Company, Viserys Targaryen, the Beggar King, and the Targaryen claimant to the Iron Throne, feasted the captains of the Golden Company in hopes they might take up his cause to reclaim the throne from King Robert I Baratheon. His sister, 
Daenerys Targaryen, then just a little girl, witness them eating his food and hear his pleas and laugh at him. Later, Mal secretly plotted with Magister Ilario Mopatis, Lord Varys, and the exiled Lord John Cornington to have the Golden Company aid the apparent Aegon Targaryen in claiming the Iron Throne. By 296 AC, Miles was dead. His skull was dipped in gold and placed upon a company standard. He was succeeded as Captain General by the company paymaster, Sir Harry Strickland. When John Connington later arrives at the Golden Company's encampment near Volantheris, he contemplates the company's golden skulls ringing the Captain General's tent. It is said that Miles' skull has a glittering grin. Later, following the taking of Griffin's Roost, John also recalls a conversation with Miles, in which he explains he could not have done better at Stony Sep to prevent the Battle of the Bells, that not even Lord Tywin Lannister could have done more to prevent it. Miles responded that Tywin simply would have burnt down the town and killed every living creature in it, to bring an immediate end to Robert's rebellion, as Robert's death would have led Lords Eddard Stark and Hoster Tully into accepting pardons. This recollection strengthens John's desires to not make the same mistakes in his war, to seat Prince Aegon Targaryen on the Iron Throne. And as of now, until we see the Winds of Winter, this is all we know.